starting to stream, start a little. What are you gonna this is true bro, yeah, instead of yeah, everything, I'm all, I'm all I'm all into this for my stoners okay. uh, and like my cannabis enthusiasts. Uh, yeah. Never heard a show as good as this, uh, yeah, number one is the best. Bring in uh, many special guests in the I'm industry, cool. 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 cannabis, cool. 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 cannabis, owners, bro. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, respect, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a cigarette. True buds. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. I have, yeah. I spent a lot of time in Europe, so spliffs are worth that for me. Dude, they do do a lot of spliffs out there, yeah, my buddy yeah. too. Yeah. And everybody for tu tuning in, yeah. welcome to the True oh, Buzz hey. Show. Yeah, we're on. We got Can of Crusher in the building here. Hell. Yeah, What's doing a little Cannabam Fam Christmas Jam. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Hey man, it's been a good time. Yes. Thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Man, it feels good. So now Russell works for Eye Crusher. Yes, sir. And you can say it more eloquently than me. So give me a little heads up on that. Yeah, absolutely. So Eye Crusher is a uh, vape hardware manufacturer and we white label and wholesale. So Plug and Play, for example, and Stizzy is uh, a couple of clients of ours that we have exclusivity with their models of vaporizers. So um, C-Cell, I'm not sure if anyone's really familiar with the technology that goes behind what's heating up any of our extracts and carts, but it is actually um, a topic that I've really uh, gone out of my way to shine light on because it's a health hazard. We have heavy metals. Uh, we've got all of these knockoff carts, for example, uh, you know, that you can get knockoff packaging anywhere. And uh, it really sucks that you don't know what you're getting anymore. So it's hard to keep up. But Eye Crusher has gone out of their way to kind of legitimize the technology that does pass those heavy metal tests um, and even when you hold it in your hand you know that it is quality uh, so I honestly would never want to sell a product that wasn't the best <laughs> you know because yeah, you got to get behind you, it right you stand behind your stand behind your product you know and uh, I do have to say not just because I work for them uh, but it is you know it is the best technology and the safest uh, it is made in China but at the same time we have a stateside R&D and Q, uh, QC team. So the quality control is once it comes to the states. Because it's all, it's all in-house, you're saying? You, got, you all, own we everything. We do own our factory, yeah. Which is big in the space, right? Cause yeah, the... yeah. So we specialize in vape hardware. There are a lot of uh, manufacturers that don't specialize in it. They just do knockoffs. They could make your 7-Eleven chargers. They could make, you know, your fake ear pods. Uh, it's a skew of crap electronics, but our factory specializes in big razor hardware. So that's how we kind of separate ourselves, men from the boys. And what's kind of a, maybe a couple telltale signs or a telltale sign when you, can you right away be like, oh, that's some bullshit. When you see something like an imposter? Well, me personally, just because I, work with them every day i can see it um and you know i don't like to talk too much negativity on the competitors and so i won't bring up the company names respect but uh they are really just looking at volume of electronics that really could fail on you and some of the biggest companies that are using our competitors are saying, hey, our terpenes are burning immediately, and people are coughing, and it doesn't doesn't hit like it should. So that's no good when you want to bring out the best of your oils or your extracts. So I do what I can to work with extractors to bring out the uh, integrity of their oils on how it should be consumed, because it really does come from, it's an art, it's an art how you can extract it uh, from flour. I believe it. I've tried to sure. just use a rosin press a couple times and even just doing that, it's hard, man. It's yeah, like... Definitely. So how you get it to a right viscosity into a cart, it's, uh, it's not easy. Sorry. Um, You're good. You're good. Yeah, and that's... 
So do you have a favorite company that does that? Do you have a or like a top one or something that? Um, it's hard to tell because I <laughs> because I work on the hardware side of things. I don't like paying full price for anything. <laughs> I don't even work on that side, and I, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> You know, and so oh, these dablicators that I've been buying, they go into our carts the best. The viscosity is thick enough, but uh, not too viscous that it, it works really well. Oh, damn. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, I'm, I've uh, got a vape pen for the first time that opens up and you can load the fucking wax or shad or whatever. So to... is that a dab pen? Yeah, but it has like different attachments. You could add, do a 510 oh, on oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, you could really? do some. Who's yeah. that by? Is that by G-Pen? Uh, it was Apollo, I think. For, huh, interesting. Uh, yeah, so okay. it's cool, man. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the only way to make it in this market is, I mean, for example, anytime we come out with a product, there is a knockoff that comes very, very quickly behind it for a cheaper price. And then people learn that it's uh, crap, <laughs> you know, and then so it wipes us off the market because people buy the knockoffs of what they think is quality from us. And so we have to constantly be innovating and being, you know, creative in new technologies of vape hardware. And with that, do you have to like are you changing you have to con constantly because i know edible companies or even you know who package it up they say all the time like it, they want to keep their like brand looking the same but you have to change it up because what right. you're saying these counterfeiters so as um i'm gonna light this bad boy yeah man light it up brother and the big one. Uh, one, two, three, happy birthday oh, to you, you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gio. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, buddy. Uh, shout out to Gio at uh, Baking and Baking. Where's the camera at? That's how we're doing it. That's how we're doing it. Baking and Baking, that's what's good. It is Geo, right? Geo? Okay, cool. I was like, Geo? Double check. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, let's see. Where were we? Oh, I was just kind of saying, how often do you have to... I guess you're more on the wholesale the, side, the so it's probably more than you... Well, so we, we OEM. ODM is original direct manufacturer, and then original exclusive manufacturer. We own both. So... No one can necessarily compete with a third party manufacturer. If that Just in pricing, sense. you're saying, right? Yeah. Right, right. So we can customize your brand and we can also make generic blanks. If you're a smoke shop and you wanted 510 batteries, you can get them wholesale directly from us. You wouldn't have to go through an online website, uh, a wholesaler. It's direct manufacturer wholesale. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So. You just kind of cut out the middleman if you were to go through iCrusher for anything. And if you wanted to start your own brand, um, extracting and processing is huge because you can extract and process so much from the cannabis plant itself. Um, the oils that you can get from it, I mean, it's it recycles itself. And so all the gro people that grow they want to recycle the, their plant as much as they can and that's when you can make desolate out of it you know from the trim biomass hemp hemp oil Just burn it down and uh, it's you know unlimited uh, fuel <laughs> per se <laughs> you know in so many different ways so uh, we're just at the beginning of a revolution the green rush really uh, as cannabis gets legalized and somewhat regulated because let's be honest what I call the traditional market black market <laughs> uh, it's always gonna be there and the tighter the regulated market and the actual legal market gets the bigger the traditional markets gonna get so finding those balances is still uncharted waters we, we don't really know yeah 
There's too many loopholes in gray areas if you think about it. Yeah, and that's well with that too. It, what does something excite you like just in the vape space for the future of like technology or something in there? Vaping, yes. Uh, I do feel that 510 cartridges and batteries are the new raw papers <laughs> per se. Okay. Uh, it's the staple of the mobile way to smoke. You know, if you're a dabber, uh, you still know your concentrates. So if you're able to find a good card that you like, you can't be <laughs> smoking globs or dabs everywhere unless you got a puff coat and you're a badass and you just want to bring that shit everywhere. So I love these live <laughs> resin. Um, I love these live resin cards, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're fucking yeah. nice. Right, right. So uh, there, it's still the regulations on what is what to um when it comes to regulation um, and compliance, compliance is huge. You have to abide by the laws when it comes to advertising your product. I work for a vape hardware manufacturer. I have nothing to do with the product that goes into my product. So I still have to tread lightly and not advertise myself as if I'm selling a regulated product with any THC in it. So, yeah, I've even yeah, asked our company lawyer, you know, what can I post on Instagram? You know, because, uh, you know, Instagram itself has its own algorithms on what you're okay to post. And uh, it's been a whole science within itself keeping up with Instagram's algorithms on promoting our brand at iCrusher. Well, I was saying I was saying earlier tonight that I got like out of nowhere. I had two posts from, like a year back got flagged like a, week, really? a couple weeks ago. They're, they're, I'm like, huh? I I you didn't I was, do the recent one? <laughs> yeah, I was talking to a couple of my sales reps, and I I feel like there's a, a an updated algorithm with Instagram that uh, a lot of people's accounts have gotten shut down out of nowhere. Yeah, something went out yeah. like, not that long. Yeah, that a friend of mine her she posted a. A photo or video of her kid in the bathtub, and it and her account got shut down. Shit. Yeah. So I mean, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Hopefully. Well, I guess that's what happens with it too. But it's always interesting to see the like censorship. I've almost had my yeah. YouTube taken down a couple times. Yeah. Tons of big people have had theirs taken down and shit. So yeah, just part of the it, game, right? Like you're saying. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> but um. When you said your sales reps, um, maybe yeah. I could pick your brain on that a little bit. Course, um, what what would be a piece of advice you might give somebody who's coming into the vape market maybe looking to be a sales rep or you know something in that vein for somebody who's just a sales rep in the vape space um let's see sales reps in the vape space it is difficult to find a good quality vape hardware company and uh, that's why i am at iCrusher because i do know the quality of um our hardware um, the knockoff brands is what I would caution everybody from, uh, Crave Carts, for example, um, Lion's Breath, uh, they're all pushed through this third party black market brand and they're not tested. They're not regulated. Um, I would encourage any sales rep getting into that to stay away from those black market brands because it really is not the cleanest money at the end of the day and you could be potentially harming people by promoting a brand that's not tested or regulated by the state and um, we do need to support those farmers growers processors that put their hard work into abiding by those California state laws, um, getting their licenses, getting their resellers permits, opening up their small town shops. Um, we do need to support those guys um, big time. Well, uh, dude, that's a brilliant piece of advice too, man, because it could be, people might not even know. Right. You know, yeah. especially if you're not, if you're not in the industry, right? And you just maybe right. hopping in all of a sudden, you're like, oh uh, shit, I'm selling some like, yourself. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Do that, man. Absolutely. So you know, it's it's there's raffles that go on um, consistently as the laws change to be able to get your licenses in certain areas and zones, 
and you know the people that are undercutting the straight up families now you know times have changed cannabis is really integrated into modern day society you know and they are feeding families and my cousin is a, a hemp farmer in oh, utah shit. oh nice yeah shit. and he just did his first harvest and i'm doing what i can with my contacts to be able to see how we can get that down into crude and make cbd products uh and it's cool because i'm not very familiar with hemp but there's smokable hemp and there's a huge you know market that is not necessarily for profit in my eyes it's a medicine at this point and it always has been and now we're getting the recognition that it actually is so that's a pretty monumental moment in history yeah man that's, <laughs> that's awesome that he's doing that too yeah yeah because yeah. i have some uh, like family friends with land i've told them to do that too for a while but there's still the stigma there's still shit attached that yeah. people are like yeah what? and he's in uh, the mormon state in utah oh shit <laughs> and it's legal which is what's crazy too yeah. that's some of the legalization stuff that's interesting too yeah. to see what do you think with this recent stuff with like the un and the house and people say the senate's not going to pass that shit going on but it's still exciting you know it's uh if it doesn't move forward at least we can be proud amongst the community that we've gotten this far so it gives me faith that the next time this you know will come up through the people that it'll go through so yeah just we're kind of building up that that, that little push that <laughs> yeah 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 we're seeing what we're made of and all right we'll do it next round <laughs> <laughs> I, I persistence. think you're right. Or who knows? Patience maybe it, maybe it's a couple more. Man, yeah. You know? Patience, persistence, like, right, man. Fuck, I'm coming back even harder when I have the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you feel that way too? And like uh, sales stuff too? Like, what you? You know, you have to. Uh, there's a lot of psychology that comes into sales, and I've had the opportunity to travel a lot uh, from a young age, and uh, and I was sheltered as a kid, so. I got thrown into very diverse environments and I had to adapt and uh, learn how to communicate in different environments with new people and different cultures and languages. And that really helped me uh, be able to be versatile and help relate to a lot of people. Um, and this event, for example. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's been good, man. No, and you're doing uh doing a little uh raffle at the end yes, we're ready, uh what are you raffling away uh we are raffling away an eye crusher v fire battery compatible with muhammad's pods and plug and play whose pods sir plug and play and muhammad's okay yeah nice we, uh, manufacture their batteries Nice, man. That'll be a nice little giveaway. Yes, it will. Ho hope I'm coming up on that, dude. This thing goes like, out because I used to smoke cigarettes. Don't anymore. I roll my own. What, uh, buglers? Hey, no. Sorry to interrupt so, you. No, you're all good, man. You're all good. I interrupt people all the time. <laughs> so... Uh, this is American Spirit Turquoise Rolling Tobacco and with zigzag hemp papers and uh, cigarettes that have ringlets around the papers. It's gunpowder, so it burns evenly. Is that what it is? Yeah. For real? 100%. Man. Shit, I did not know that. Getting schooled right now. So, hence why this went out. It's because there's no gunpowder keeping it moving. This is a spliff. There's weed and tobacco. Gunpowder, man. That's interesting. So, I don't like gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, right? You, yeah. Know, you know what's some crazy shit? I was watching uh, have you, Beast of No Nation. Have you ever seen that movie? No. It's a crazy one. Yeah. It's about these child soldiers. I don't want to ruin the story, but okay. one time they're doing I've never heard of Brown Brown before. They're mixing, like, I think it was Coke and gunpowder. And like cut it and putting it like in their wounds and shit to like basically numb them for like battle. Wow. I was like, that was some crazy shit, man. Wow, man. You know, are you are you familiar with 
basically the history of drugs and the tests on our society is the United States, MK Ultra soldiers being given heroin, LSD. Uh, have you seen Pineapple Express the movie, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the beginning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's MK Ultra. Okay. When they say, illegal. <laughs> yeah. He's like, dude, what happened to your eye? <laughs> right? <laughs> so that was pretty much uh, MK Ultra experiment okay. at that time when they classified cannabis and made it illegal. Yeah, imagine being a, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> imagine being a fly on the wall for that shit that, like, for real, like... Yeah, it's so funny. Well, <laughs> which is um, which is crazy because like we're saying too that like things are just coming around now. Even the fact that it's over the past, you know, however long, but especially now that this shit's getting voted on. You know, um, there's been a lot of turmoil and change that's happening currently within 2020 that's the truth i don't know how into astrology per se that you are but the age of aquarius is coming okay are you familiar with that um i'm not really to be straight up honest with you so we're entering a new phase um i don't want to speak too much about it because i don't want to give any false information but age of aquarius <laughs> is a new age that we're entering and we're basically rebirthing ourselves on an energetic level um to summarize and uh we're kind of on the brink of change and through change uh we have to put ourselves in uncomfortable situations and uh the whole thing with covid i do believe that covid for example is a real thing uh but it's unfortunate that we can't necessarily trust the information that we're given to be accurate from our leaders and that is where uh we need to verify where we're getting our information and it's too bad that it is like that but uh we got to protect ourselves on what is true and what's not because people can be dumb in numbers man <laughs> You know, sheeple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I've heard that one, but yeah, I like that, and you it's know? true, man. So you, you see one, it's like birds. You see one bird fly, and you just keep going on. Well, on yeah. That and it's and like, then uh, you're like, oh, wait, this is bullshit. Yeah, and you're like, like, oh, wait, I actually think that's bullshit, too. And you're like, hey, 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 we're right on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm in like. Let's go smoke in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you create a subculture. Oh, shit. Sure. And you have events like this. <laughs> yeah, man, it was a good time, man. For real. Yeah, man. I'm glad we're able uh, to do this. Um, uh, how long have you been doing uh, this overall? I'd love to interview yeah, you in a way, yeah, man. Yeah, Tell no, me yeah, about yourself. Good. Why do you do what you do and why are you passionate about it? Because you obviously are passionate about it. And I love hearing why people do what they do. Um, just because I enjoy it, you know. I was, yeah. just, well, first thing first with the podcast in general, just being here. Yeah. Why I do it is like right now, kicking it, yeah. talking to you, yeah, chilling. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and this space is not something I've never done too, so yeah. it's cool to like switch it up. Definitely. You know, people kicking it, having fun here, and we're just chatting it up. So that's kind of why I do it. And then, um, but the reason why I started too was just my love for making like films and stuff. So I started cool. making videos on TrueBuds TV. Okay. And then um, I always love weed too. Yeah. So I'm like, well, let me just combine two things that I really enjoy. Yeah, it's a culture. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. For real. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, where did you grow up? New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, what I what got, about you? I got that East Coast vibe from it. And Kansas for a little and bit. Can oh, okay, okay. I, I gotcha. Got <laughs> got yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, I uh, I grew up Orange County. I'm uh, OG surfer. <laughs> nice man. I could never move away from the beach, the ocean. Yoga and surfing is a big part of my life. My dad and I um, race sailboats, oh, and uh, we surf together quite a bit. And uh, so the ocean is a big part of my life, and we scuba dive together. And so, uh, yeah, it's the climate here politically is tough to see recently. But, uh, yeah, my girlfriend and I are doing everything we can to stay here. And <laughs> Man, it's, it's hard it. to beat, dude. It, it's it really is. And I love, I love connecting with people that move here um, from outside of California. 
because there is uh, that draw and that energy that I understand, um, you know, from people that do major. And, and vice versa for me too. I love meeting people that are um, from here too, yeah, because so yeah, many yeah, people definitely. aren't, you know, too. Right. It's right. like so that I, I feel the same thing too. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Cool, man. I want to learn like yeah, about the spot, like and especially people that uh, are in the LA area. Orange County to San Diego to Mexico. I drive to Mexico with my dog, my girlfriend to surf, and I drive all the way up to Sonoma to rock climb past San Francisco, uh, up to Oregon, Mammoth. I've worked and lived out of my van in uh, Yosemite. Damn, man. Uh, and I love California, man, and I just uh, love adventure. And it's cool to share uh, in a local, you know, kind of... <laughs> OG mentality of an adventure that grew up in the area to anyone that hasn't been from here because a lot of people that moved to LA that are not from California they have no idea anything outside of LA <laughs> Orange County San Diego San Francisco it's easy to get stuck in LA yeah <laughs> you're, you're, you're looking at <laughs> <laughs> yeah well let me know man. let's get you on a surfboard let's go to Catalina you know what's funny dude is I've, I'm yet to try surfing yeah, I know I, know I need too, to. Man. Not that I need to, even I want to. Do you have, I mean, I know some people I've are pretty like secret. Like, do you have a favorite spot? Or like, look, like, how does it work for you? Like, I do. So um, just knowing from being a sailor, for example, I understand how the winds and the tides work, and that really comes into play when you are looking for the best surf. Uh, the even how the bottom of the ocean is shaped on a certain swell. What are you looking for, Rosie? <laughs> Your glasses. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when it comes to surfing, the bottom of the ocean, for example, Laguna Beach is a rocky bottom, and there's not much surf there, but when you go to San Clemente, just five miles south of that, it's all sand bottom. And uh, one of the best surf breaks in Orange County is on the border of San Diego and Orange County, Trestles. Um, and it's San Onofre or San Mateo Creek. And I used to work for an environmental activist group called Surf Rider Foundation. And it was based around protecting our ocean waves and beaches. So that okay. had a lot of um, influence on developers trying to come in and build on these state parks and these protected lands Shit. and so it was a lot of state policy um on you know land ownership and it was really interesting to be a part of that of you know being in that community of surfing all these great breaks that i would skateboard a mile and a half to get to and then these the toll roads, for example, wanted to expand from Southern Orange County through to this specific surf break that was Trestles. And it was a, a battle, a big legal battle of these developers. And it was really cool to see the environmental side of things of the community that comes together. And my girlfriend is an environmental engineer, uh, believe it or not. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you never really think about how much work goes in to preserve the environment around us because it gets you know abused every day <laughs> and surfing and seeing plastic in the water and crap yeah huh? you've probably seen some you know it's like oh man and have you seen um a lot of that change over the time and just progressively getting worse or has it been like consistent just in terms of the pollution factor you know it's it's hard to really know to get accurate information to True. gauge it all. True. I do feel that people are more aware of it. So that's good. With social media, for example, more things are being posted about awareness of what's going on in the world, period. So that is a step in the right direction. You know, whether it's not whether or not it's getting worse, awareness of, of anything is already the step you know, in the right direction of making a change. Because you know, I always say, you know, and Surfrider always said this as well, um, is to think globally and act locally. And, uh, you know, everyone has so much power to do their part to make a change in any environment.
That's very true. My my younger brother was saying like something just like that the other day, and he's like, "That's where that's where it starts." Yeah, it's like support your local artist, support your local DJ, okay. support your local farmer. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it's the only way to you know really make. Yeah, and you got some DJ up. skills, man. I mean, I try. I'm a drummer. Uh, I I spent a lot of my time behind a microphone, man. <laughs> uh, weddings, bar mitzvahs. Um, what were, big what did you like more? <laughs> What was your favorite? MCs. Yeah. That was my world, MC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was there a crazy, craziest time, like craziest club, craziest? Oh, man. Let's see. I worked for Monster Energy for uh, five years, and I had hired, I had hired a BMX team <laughs> to come out and do backflips <laughs> oh. and shit. Oh, shit. And it was. This uh, is getting good right off the bat. <laughs> And then uh, I think it was the Cheetos guy, the Cheetos guy, uh, Chester, the Chester. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was sponsoring Supercross, and this motherfucker was coming out. Emma, can I say fuck? <laughs> All right, cool. This motherfucker was coming out, and he was like 30 minutes late, and <laughs> and so was the DJ. The DJ was like 40 minutes late. Shit. And so I'm like running around, and my boss is looking at me like, what the hell is going on? And I had to get behind the tables and uh, kind of entertain the crowd for like 30 minutes. And it was really fun because it kind of tested my <laughs> it tested my skills. Oh, and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really fun because uh, I kind of was uh, testing the crowd of making stupid jokes. Be like, is this thing on? Testies. Testies. One, <laughs> you know, as I'm just trying to figure out how to turn the mixers on and so forth and then um one of the uh, monster girls had brought out the chester head that uh he was supposed to wear and i put it on and uh, i turned on some dead mouse and it was really funny because i was wearing a chester the cheetah uh, head playing ghosts and stuff and then 20 minutes later motherfucker shows up and uh that went on. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so well, you gotta straight to stay uh, transparent, you know? Yeah, sure. And the dudes were just pulling off backflips the whole time, or what? Yep. How much yep. does something like that cost, or what's like? Um, you know, S Supercross and that parking lot of Anaheim Stadium, we were the exclusive sponsor of it, so we kind of chose how much. Uh, footprint that we had marketing wise um so i wouldn't know those actual numbers but <laughs> they're probably really <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know uh i did i'm just picturing marketing. you rocking out now with the <laughs> cheetah on man so uh when i worked at monster we paid two million dollars a year just to store free marketing products that we gave away for free, oh. just to give you a, an understanding of their marketing budget. Fucking, okay. you know? hey, it worked, right? Hey, so <laughs> that's hey. When I said sheeple, people were dumb in numbers. You pay fucking three fifty for horse piss, <laughs> you know, just to give you a little kick. It's like hey. take some Adderall like an adult. Yeah, shit. I, I will say I do drink. <laughs> I do drink that shit. Hey, I had some tonight. It goes good with fucking. Yeah, fucking. <laughs> Hey man. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. See, but they they Remember. sold the lifestyle. Yeah. They did. And uh the motocross and motor uh community um they marketed. Red Bull set the pace, but they're they're not an American company. So, uh they're an Austrian company. Really? Red Bull. Yeah. Monster recently Did not know that shit. Yeah, Monster recently bought Red Bull's flavoring plant. So now Red Bull is a client of Monster Energy. I think Monster tastes better than Red Bull. Yeah. But that's interesting though that they just popped on it. It's kind of like this Sprint T-Mobile shit. Yeah, it's always a battle. Always a battle. It's a uh, capitalist America, and it is uh, Wild Wild West. You know. That's the beauty of it, right? It is. It's a. Uh, it's a dark beauty too. It's yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's ups uh, and downs, and you know, uh, 
I, I don't necessarily want to get too political because everybody, you know, has their opinions and stuff. Uh, if anything, I try to stay non-biased as possible. But I see the struggle and I try to look at both sides of things. Uh, rent control, for example. Uh, rent control, in my eyes at first, was like, oh, yeah, you know, it's hard for people to afford rent. And I talked to my father, who's very non-biased on lots of things as well. And if no one's creating or upholding properties or building more, there's less places for people to live. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, it's, what do you do? I, well, well, yeah, it's, I think what people aren't creating well i guess that's kind of what's even it's been happening job. yeah so things are more expensive and we're seeing more people go back to you know living together more even like in right. families and stuff like of course. Of course. So. and there's no houses being built anymore they're just building up and the condos cost the price of you know what my parents paid which is crazy and that's what blows my mind too when i'm driving through the u.s and you see all this open space right right and you're like yeah, and we don't need to live in these cities. But, no, yeah. We're kind of being forced into these cities, and even our food is being mass produced. And, uh, you know, it's tough to know. I mean, my girlfriend's vegan, for example, and I'm kind of vegan by default, and I feel better, to be honest. Yeah. Because, you know, there's other ways to get protein. And if you think about where our meat's being processed, and there is no real food shortage. It's uh, an illusion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's which is crazy too. Yeah. But and the thing about me too is I'm such a I love grilling and stuff. I no, hey man. But no, too. I get your point though, because like especially that's where I try to buy at least in the middle somewhere. Because sometimes it's just, yeah. buy the prime would be best. But sometimes like you see this shit in the store, it's like what is that? Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. with like fifteen percent this, ten right, percent this. Like what? Right. And I mean, <laughs> if there's anything that I don't trust in the United States, it's the FDA. No oh, shit, really, huh? <laughs> I mean, you know the Food and Drug Administration is oh, gone, shit. Well, you know what's... You know, we, we, we have caused a drug war of these so-called regulated drugs, opiates, for example. I've lost multiple friends to opiates. Yeah, Prescription it's, opiates. It's, it's you know? Real. Uh, and uh, pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals are, I mean, I, that's a whole other can of worms, but you know what I mean? Well, you know, it's, I'm, it's, I'm on the uh, same page with you because it's, uh, yeah. that's the beauty of just weed in general and shit, too. Yeah. It's like, damn. Yeah. It's like, dude, that the pharmaceutical shit, I watched some documentary where they're doing pill mills or whatever. Yeah. These doctors at 2 a.m. line out the door at 2 a.m. writing scripts. I'm like, that shit's nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's hard to regulate. It really is. And, uh, you know, the cash is. Florida, for example, my girlfriend's from Florida. Yeah. Florida is the state to not really regulate um, pharmaceuticals, and they make their way across the United States. And uh, Xanax, lots well, of you know opiates. What? That's crazy. You know what kind of scares me a little bit is like yeah. what's gonna happen when it's weed. Like, is it gonna become? What, what, what like when when, when the FDA is starting to regulate cannabis, is it becoming? The black market's too big, and it has been for too long, you know. And it's not harmful enough. Where, um, I mean, think about mess heads, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you know that culture of addictive drugs and heroin and speed and crack. That will never go away. And you can freebase a lot of those ingredients from pharmaceuticals. I mean, Adderall, for example, I mean, that's a methamphetamine within itself. And people can pop those all day. And uh, Oxycontin and fentanyl. I've lost a couple of friends with fentanyl. And they're being... My younger siblings have. That shit's crazy. Three, four grains of fentanyl is deadly. And that's it's just scary. I lost my friend that he thought it was a Xanax bar, and it was printed <laughs> from a Mexican cartel. Uh, Xanax bar, and it's it's just you know, one little. That's yeah, that's yeah, some shit. It's crazy, and it's like sweeped across the United States, and a lot of the stuff doesn't get reported. You know? Why is that? You think? I mean, 
there's so much other stuff. I mean, who, I think know. about who controls the media overall and like what's important. Oh yeah. You know, when my friend passed away, I went to, you know, the local police department and they said, there's an overdose every day in this area. And it was kind of no big deal to them. It, was, it gave me some perspective. That's of how <laughs> real and widespread. And, and, when, and when you say like a couple greens, it's like, dude, that shit's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you can, you can get, you can get pill presses online, and people are pressing their own pharmaceutical pills, knock off Adderall, Xanax, everything's old, you know, <laughs> E-Tabs, yeah, like, and, yeah. and shit, uh, I mean, dark nets real too. Well, I guess it comes full circle because we're talking at the beginning about get shit getting knocked off. You know, just different things. It's crazy. There's always Definitely. gonna. There's All always vapor. <laughs> you can buy knockoff packaging, and some of the big brands backdoor their brands. Well, that was Huge a big bust market. with a cushy punch. It went out however long back. I don't want to bring up any of. Oh no, that's know, cool. Names, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's uh, there are big brands that. And that's the a, rules as guidelines, and they well, backdoor they kinda, that shit that scans. It's hard though, too, because <laughs> and, and I. And that's hard because I feel like sometimes they almost they don't have to, but it's like it's, it's so it's hard. Just cash, to, dude. Yeah, it's, it's so fucking it's expensive, expensive yeah. place to be. And uh, a lot of the stuff goes overseas. The moment that it gets packaged here or filled here, they send it off, and that price just skyrockets. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <For real? laughs> yeah. 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 Man, it's like that. Uh, Reminds me like American gangster shit when he's bringing it in. Yeah. Fucking Frank Lucas shit. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's happening, you know? And so back to supporting the local farmers and processors, uh, we got to keep the legitimate guys that are putting in the work, not knocking people off for sure. Yeah. You know, people are doing it right. Um, I know it can be... Like Eye Crusher, that's dope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Eye Crusher is giving the safest piece of hardware to bring out the um, integrity of all the oils or the extracts that are coming from these really, really good flower, you know, cultivators um, that are bringing out all of the terpenes that are making, you know, the live resins and the live rosins and the technology is always changing. And I'm working with extractors and processors on how I can find the right viscosity of their extracts to bring out what they want their consumer to taste and experience from you know how much time and energy they've put into growing it and processing and extracting it so all the way down to the um, aperture holes um, which are the intake holes at the bottom of the cartridges how big they are and the voltage of the heat that is required for it to vaporize is a huge science and chemistry in itself. Uh, but we're really selling an experience when it comes to anybody's product too. Uh, all the way down to the marketing. Uh, these guys put a lot of hard work into how they market their product and how they sell their brand and they're proud of it. And that's one of the things I do at iCrusher is I help people build their brand. Um, and so I like to work with them as closely as possible to bring out the best of their product with that vape hardware. And there's every no one else that does that. I was about to say, every, every experience <laughs> no tailored. <laughs> and, and like when you're talking about that, I didn't realize how important that was because yeah. I didn't, I was geeking out a little bit before we had this, before we met up today, just so yeah. I could yeah, brush yeah. up and learn them. But I was reading a bit just like the right, you're saying just the little hole, the right, right. you're even like the core, there's like different the cores core. in the ceramic exactly. that people can cheat and do cheaper. It's right. like rosin, for example, ros live rosin carts are uh, solventless, uh, fresh frozen nugs pressed. Um, that's a big thing on the market that's coming through. And Traditionally, it's been really difficult to find a cartridge that would be able to handle that thick viscosity. Um, but we're the company that anyone would want to go to to be able to find that perfect, you know, medium. Because we also know terpenes very well, and there's flavorless, uh, odorless uh, solvents that are terpene derived 
that can be added as an agent that there's no vitamin E or MCT or anything that's harmful when it's vaporized um, to go into your live rosin cards. So it's, uh, it's an evolving thing though, you know? People are extracting and processing in so many different ways and they're using different agents you never know. <laughs> you never know. You got to stay on top of you know what these processors and extractors are doing, and that's what what I do. I go out of my way to know what people are doing, what hardware they're using, all the way down to you know these um, what are they? The Yokan um, dab. Uh, the little like volcanoes, the, little volcano units. The little, like, Puffco thing? Yeah, Puffco, I'm sorry. Yeah, I should know that. Puffco. They're one of our <laughs> biggest competitors. Yeah, I, just, how, I don't give a fuck about Puffco. You know? You're dead to me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I want to know what people are using because that's how we can R&D and develop competitive products. Be a, step ahead, be a step ahead. You, like yeah. you're saying, seeing this, the rosin hit the market. Like, right. Oh, from the beginning stage, see one person in it. Right. Oh, we can yeah. be a step ahead. and Yeah, and we followed that trend with disposables uh, big time. Disposables, now that more and more states are opening up to cannabis use, there's more retail shops and there's more storefronts uh, where you can sell cannabis. And people that travel, a lot of people travel to California and destination places for the cannabis culture, they really do. And uh, I did, I, I learned a lot about that when I worked at MedMen because I was buying up bus bench ads and sides of buses and selling cannabis tours sponsored by MedMen and even billboards that would drive people into our stores. EDC was a big one um, and just kind of grassroots marketing. And it, it's crazy, the culture behind it. And so when people travel, disposables, I'm a yeah, big sense. environmentalist guy. I, well, and that was it my, I was sucks <laughs> for our landfills, but fuck, that money. Well, I've even felt that way with my yeah. carts. I was like, yeah. is there such thing as a like, risk? You don't want to reuse it probably I, for like the same thing. Dude, you but... know what? We should talk about that because you know, I told you my girlfriend's an environmental engineer and we both are, you know, we really care about our environment. Um, I've been thinking about how I would love to start a recycle um, program of some sort as a promotion with either manufacturers or local stores to get 10% off your next visit because we recycle the empty carts and batteries and especially the disposables. It'd be cool to do. And because it's electronics recycling. It's no different than yeah, dropping off a, a printer or an old screen. Yeah, it's like a old know? blockbuster movie. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 You know, and colleges do that a lot. They do electronic recycling. And what is the battery though in the portable? Is it just how do they? It's uh, it's just a lower. They lower, time it right to drain out to. Yeah, it's just not as nice as a battery that maintains its. It's not as regulated as the 510 that I gave you. Sure. Um, and so it has a shelf life. Those don't really have a shelf life. They, they burn at a consistent voltage as you set it. And when it starts to die, it won't burn unless it can burn at that consistent voltage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Unregulated batteries. Yeah, yeah, it's just burn like, as long as, as it hits can. that. As and it hits that, like peak. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which so. makes it so much more important for it not to die out early, right? Right. And so, how iCrusher has stayed ahead of the game, we've come out with we have half gram disposables that are not rechargeable because they can last through that half gram, uh, but the gram, we it comes with a charging port but you can't refill it. So if it were to go out prior to your oil going out, you could charge it and finish it. Yeah. Sure. So that's Backup plan, there. yeah. Yeah, no, that's how you can stay ahead of the game. Sure. It's funny, yeah, I've, I've had a couple clients be like, hey man, so uh, yeah, wh what's your price on the disposable? I told them the price. They're like, oh, okay, cool. Can you, you can recharge it, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, well, can you reuse it? I'm like, no, dude, it's a disposable. He's like, oh, well, I don't know if we can do business, man. Like, you can't reuse it. 
I'm like, okay, you basically wanted what? a price. <laughs> Of, you, uh, the price of a disposable. Oh shit! For a reusable. Yeah. And I was like, take a hike, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, dude. <laughs> and he had no yeah. idea. I was like, yeah, no. Nah. Well, I just thought you could do it two or three times, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, I mean, honestly, these coils and the cotton that's around the coil itself, you wouldn't want to drench it for that long with any oils because it just would not taste fresh. Yeah, huh? you know, it can only handle so many kind of zaps of that battery. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just a piece of metal coil that goes up. It's like it honestly, you know, those uh, springs and pens. Yeah, those little. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, did you make those water bottle bongs as a kid, too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Out of pens. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. I uh, uh, yeah. A little yeah. like one E2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those <sighs> springs, it's basically it's wrapped around cotton and this open um cylindrical tube that goes up into you know the tank and so you know uh, the the length of that coil is what determines the resistance and the heat so so the longer the more heat the more the shorter the short it's because more compact it's more pressure or does the pressure uh, not even matter more, it's more um uh how do i say this I'm fucking high. <laughs> I was like, what if I'm I right? The more current, the more electrical current that can flow through it. Okay. And so therefore it burns hotter. That makes know. sense. Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. getting schooled here today. I mean, no, it's cool though, because like it's I, a whole, I, I, it's a I've started I used to vape a lot more than I have yeah. lately, but it's like a lot of times you don't take the time to think about this. Or I didn't. Yeah. You know, I didn't yeah. I did sometimes, but I'd focus more on like what's inside the cart the product but it's like actually thinking right. about the hardware itself is more interesting it's like a kind of flip a perspective you, you almost can, to see because it's like yeah. these people like you're saying spending their hard to earn time or whatever yeah, making right, this right, right. they need something that's going to be legit that's going to right and it's easy to get really good product and have it ruined by bad hardware so a sad and, moment and, yeah and if you feel i had a client of mine that was filling their cartridge is way too hot they were filling it at like 120 degrees and their stuff was leaking and it's because it was so viscous and liquidy that it would bleed through the bottom oh, shit. and then it would get hard and then uh get solid and then it would sit and it would slowly just leak through. Oh, shit. 10 degrees lower didn't leak anymore just a little as as a little and I said, yeah, and I said, you know, why are these, you know, why are these doing this? And I was really thinking about it, and I was talking to one of my engineers, and then uh, we were like, yeah, it's probably a little too warm. And then once he did that, problem solved. Bam. I kind of shot myself uh, in the foot because he's not buying carts right now. Well, <laughs> hey, it, it's cool, though. I, I've met you know, they come to me for, I, for questions. And, and I, I was about to say, I respect that you're, yeah. like, in the trenches with those questions, and you're there yeah. for your clients like that. Like for you're sure. saying, it's one of a type type deal man and you know they go out of their way to i mean there was a big scare with vitamin e oil um you know and cutting agents and um heavy metal testing within a lot of carts that are knocked off uh from these brands that go out of their way to pay you know these engineers and these chemists to have no uh heavy metals come out when heat is introduced to vaping these extracts and oils so it's uh yeah that i remember that shit's crazy too yeah there's just the fact that people were getting yeah just yeah. whack shit back to all everything can be counterfeit too man but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thank you for your knowledge today man you yeah, dropped dude, it's absolutely. been it's been good kicking it man Definitely. and um thank you thank you hope we can do this again for sure man it's yeah. been a cool spot man maybe come over to my place we'll go or the studio or just Definitely. kick it man for sure just uh for sure. yeah man that's Let's what's up it, man um I think that's about it, man. I'm, all right, all right. Good um, stuff. Yeah, man. I'm excited for this giveaway. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, yeah was the, what was the what uh, was the guy's name who made that dope little samurai sword? <sighs> I have I'm, I have my phone recording. I forget. Um, I off the top of my head. But yeah, dope little that little dope little dab tool look cool too. Yeah, I want to give yeah, him a yeah. shout out. I was like, you come yeah, on the show yeah. too and yeah, check yeah, it yeah, out. Definitely, so definitely. Um, what, what do you think? Um, should we should we do the giveaway to the attendees that came or should we do it now any insight um i would say to well just to increase my that. chance no, I'm just kidding. No, 
<laughs> well, no, I, you will have a chance. Uh, uh, no, I'm saying, I, yeah, do you I, want that for the podcast? Oh, that's cool. We can. Okay, because I was thinking I could prolong the event exposure of people that came if I did the giveaway with that same rain sword, like on Monday. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, because we could do it now if you want. No, 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 no. That's good. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, give it. Yeah. Like prolonging uh, the stoke of. I want to make my, FOMO, you know? It's like hell you yeah, fucking man. missed out, guys. Building it up, building up because. Yeah, um, you don't get a cool you? dab samurai sword. Yeah, this thing is sick. For real. <laughs> I, I'm like, damn, this thing's a real deal. But hey, man, thanks again, brother. Yeah, absolutely. And, man. Uh, I'll keep an eye out. out uh, follow at Can of Crusher for that giveaway. Yes, sir. Yes, Check sir. that out. It'll be below, too. Absolutely. And, yeah, man. Great, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Can Thank you, man. Bam. Thank you, man. Yeah, got the Christmas <laughs> gear, too. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, Good shout stuff. out to everybody who was here today. It was yeah. fucking awesome, man. So there was someone else that had the same fucking sweater. Huh? Oh, you left? Yeah. Psh, he got jealous. He's like, dude, I can't have the same sweater. <laughs>